Hi there. So today we're going to do a video on a timing of when to attack. And I'm going to use this video of Grimier versus Grozzo. And Grozzo gets kind of smashed, unfortunately. So Enrico, if you're watching this, I apologize to use you as an example. Um, and well, what Grimier does is he takes the lead off relatively simple hits, but the the big thing I want to focus is when these hits happen. Like when do you want to attack someone? All right, so let's let's have a look. Let's let's dive in a bit. In the All right, so we have Grimier starting the match. Grimier is always one of those fencers. He's so accurate, so deadly, but not known for being the most physically dominant fencer. Even though he's just such a clean fencer. It's early match. Let's see what happens. Alright, notice the distance. Grimier would always fence tip to tip or right middle. And then if he got past this, he could easily threaten here. Okay. This first hit. Let's look at why it worked. So, right before the action, you're tip to tip, roughly. You're both from a normal long guard. This is relative to your opponent's long guard. Grimier takes a step to see. So, the prep is actually, look at that. They both prep at roughly the same time. This is actually like video perfect almost. They both prep at the same time. But from this distance, if you're going to do a straight flesh, not going to happen. And Garoso is a smart fencer. He, he tries to go in. So he goes straight, tries to get a beat. But Green Age, just quick enough to get it. Even with a little beat. He's trained for this. Green Age is one of the best remiss games in the game in the business. So because of the distance, this Garoso would have to get a little closer. Grimia gets it. So the big timing is look at that. Prep is the same, but Garoso thinks he's ahead on timing, but Grimia is ready for it. Single light. Keeps going. <laughs> Not a like it's a good hit for Grimier, and Garoso has no reason to think that his timing was off. It's not the worst idea. He was a bit far in distance, but he really tried to get that beat in. So Grimier always had this meticulous way of sneaking step. So then he actually steps back. He's just he's checking to see if his tempo is up ahead, right? So here, safe distance, he does a little beat, he walks in, nothing happens. No risk. So, this hand hit, so you just take it. It's not always going to happen, but I mean, if you can, if you can get a free hand hit, you take it. Good point control. Then Green is just a French sniper, so why didn't this tail hit work? So Grimmy does his prep, steps out. So here, Grosso does his toe hit, but like, see, they're kind of middle, middle blade to middle blade. And Grosso does two time to the foot. He's overshooting. This distance, direct, would have been maybe a double, but Grimmy was ready. Tip on target with the foot landing. Right, so pay attention to when the foot lands. That's a really big indicator of when you can attack. Foot lands. See, so this is actually this is actually pretty picture perfect. This is awesome. So we're gonna back up a bit. So, Grosso, th he th he's actually ahead, which is pretty. Right, see, his, he lands first, Grimia steps forward, not a bad idea, but the distance is off. Grimia gets a single. 
So timing, distance, timing, distance. Let's let's remember that. So Green Owl is ridiculous. Gets that front foot in there. Gets the preps. Notice the distance. Tip to tip. If he gets the middle, he either sneaks out or does something about it. So Grosso is now being a bit more careful with his preps, which is good because he's getting caught on his preps. So double, so here, step, step, his foot lands first. Alright, so here, Grimia steps, his foot lands, Garotho thinks he can catch him flat footed. The only problem for me here, this is a little bit off. But he still goes for the beat. Like, Garoso's smart guy. He goes for a beat or a take. And he's just a little off because Grimia's tip is so sharp and ready. We're okay with this. It is what it is. Well, I mean, Grimia's okay with it. <coughs> so, right now, Grimia, commanding lead. He's happy. And especially uh, back then, Garoso is a bit of a tilting fencer, so if things start not going his way, he's one of the first to kind of just throw his out the window because he's a little frustrated. Um, not so much anymore, he's getting a little, bit, a little bit older and a little bit wiser, so good on him. This was just an amazing hit. Uh, this is one of Grimish, like sharpest points, just absolutely abusing what a French handle can do. So they're tip to tip. See, he noticed they're about the same time, but Caroso's looking flat-footed. Catches him off guard. So, break it down. So they're about the same on the foot tempo, but Grimia notices that he caught him. See, Grosso's not ready to actually move. So, picks off the hand. Just, well, this is actually more like a sh elbow shoulder kind of thing. It's good. <coughs> In a bit of frustration, Grosso calls for a video review. And, got a, I, like, I like that swagger. Grimia just kind of points this, points to where he hit him. Flat-footed, and go. Right? Not ready to actually move back. This is just some really dope French grip fencing. Like, keep in mind, things like that, you can use it as a pistol. Like, you don't have to be a French grip for this to necessarily work. The timing is super important. So Grosso's putting pressure, because at this point, he's like, well, I need to be super proactive, otherwise... I'm going to get picked apart. So. So right before the hit. Skrosso is actually ahead on the tempo. Goes first, but the distance is a little bit off. So he keeps doing that distance where he tries to either take, beat. But Creamy gets the double because he's ready. But the distance is a little off. Like Creamy doesn't commit to a distance unless he's 100% sure. Boom. Here we go. I mean, Grimia is happy. Um, you can tell the coach is a little bit happier because Gross is being really proactive with the actions he's choosing. <laughs> so. So this is an interesting one, right, Garoso kind of pushes forward, sorry, right, so super far distance, Creamy does a quick step, lunge, 
But you can tell that there's no intention to hit the body. It's just to kind of let Garoso know that he's willing to punish. So, and after that, okay, so this is awesome. Big step. Before his steps even landed, Creamy has gone in. This is a timing to watch for, right? So, Grosso is trying to close that distance so he can get that straight attack. As soon as he's into it now, Creamy's already, like, the foot's not even landed. Creamy is already in there. Like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna look a one hit on how to attack better, it's here. He's ready, foot not landed, goes in. This is super textbook. Very good time to attack. If you can attack someone in their step forward, oh boy. Boom. Like, it's, Grimmy barely even flushes. He flunges at best. So, um, FIE, if you're watching this, like, just, why are you giving me a close-up of this? Not needed. Thank you. So, 8-2. Commanding lead. Okay. This hit is really, really good on how to handle this. <coughs> it's a little, a little too late. Um, I mean, he's so behind. He needs to do this a bunch of times. So, let's look slow mo. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, so what do we see here? Grumi has been hitting him on his big step, borderline direct or with a disengage. Garozzo, big step, and then after this, he. Right, big step into a small step to halt, gets the parry repose. This is actually just so clean. Like, it's one of the, this is actually just so good. Big step, small step, gets him to commit, parry, repose. Beautiful hit. If you want to set that up on someone, give him something to bite. He gets into that distance. Big step, small step, parry, repose. Just really clean fencing. It's a little late for this, because now you gotta if you can do it five more times. But the hit itself, very beautiful. Someone's hitting you on prep. Force that. Give them a fake prep. Not a big deal. Is there an element that because the top 16 in the world do get a buy directly into the 64, that if there is going to be a shot with the top seeds going out, it is going to be oh, before yeah. they so the one minute break. You're grooming, and you've been getting absolutely nothing but attacks on prep the whole time. What do you do? Do you keep going? So far, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, as Garozzo, it's it's a little tough. You need to um, right. The hit you just got was borderline picture perfect what you needed to do. But as Grumier, you gotta ask yourself: Is this guy gonna adapt and how well? So you gotta you you, you gotta hope he's gonna adapt. I mean, you hope he doesn't adapt because. What you're doing is working, but you got to assume that he's going to try. So you're wondering, is he going to try to suck you in, or is he going to push you? So let's let's kind of see what happens. So... Right now we're going with, we, it feels like Gross was trying to suck in Grimier, but overall it's still Grimier in charge. I tried to suck him in, try to get in on his step, but <laughs> taking chance, taking charge. 
shot in the second period. A few foot hits, but nothing. So Gross was being, was being way more careful. But um, let's see. So that same kind of tip. It's a little tip distance. Step back. So you notice I'm on the step back, right? So you make a small step forward on the step back. He tries to catch him, but Green is just the distance is just off. At this point, you can't really go. Even you may try to get a beat, but Green is just too accurate for that. You can't force that simple of a game on in my opinion. And see, he tries to take the blade, or even beat, but Grimi is one step ahead with the distance. So he, with French grip, he has that room to just go in and close it. Nice. So, body language here. Grotzel so frustrated. Hiroto is so incredibly frustrated. Right? So, right, ready, set, fans. Go big distance again. Same action. But Grimia stays on top. We're, yeah. Like, not necessarily impressed, but hey, I have. Uh, I, I've never made a podium on the World Cup, so who am I to um, so trash talk too much? It looked like he was trying to lead into one of those broken time attacks that he used quite well against the Korean, but in the end, he's just got his arm way too low. Um, and for a fencer of that, of that quality, I mean, he's just going to set that counter attack, place your point somewhere on your upper arm. Um, um, like I hate when they change these angles, but yeah, from um, from here, just give me a ready to go back single. So Grosso is, you can tell he's kind of tilted. It is what it is, but the big gist is um, when Grimmy is attacking, when the actions are happening. So here, big step. Foot in the air. And the distance where Grimmy is able to lunge. Grosso does get the parry, but the remiss redoubles too fast. Boom. Right with the right distance, even if you, even if your your direct action isn't quite as clean as you'd like it to be, you have more than enough time to just find a way in. Wait, he gives the point. Okay, no. Attacking out of distance. Alright, ready, fans. That same beat. Go. Just give me a step back and he gets it. There's uh, not much prep, but at 12 3, like. 13 3, excuse me. You're not quite all there, so. It is what it is. Uh, and then he's just running it in. But there's just not much to think about on these ones. So, this hit. Let's have a look. Step. So this is pretty textbook. Let's go look. Like, look at the foot. Step. Flat footed. Back foot can't plant. Go in. Right? And this is especially because their blades are at middle distance. From here, Grimmy knows he can either straight lunge, straight flesh. The timing of when you attack is so important. You need someone to be flat footed. Alright? Flat footed. So when could someone be flat footed? 
when they step forward. When else? Typically, when at end of piece. So it's either if you're fencing someone at their end, or if they're stepping forward. So in the middle, it's a bit of a gamble. Like here, in this hit, Kuroto is rushing. Of course, it's going to happen. He's going to be flat-footed. If someone's chasing you to the back, that means if you're saying, well, my opponent's pushing me all the time, that means you had all these all these timings to find when they're flat-footed and go get them. The hit doesn't have to be to the body. It doesn't have to be to the hand. You can use the hand just to see how deep they feel like getting. Okay? So, this goes back. Previous video. Footwork. Is my footwork better? Whether it is or not, you need to assess whether or not you can punish the flat foot. I hope this helps. Um, please let me know if uh, you'd like to see anything. There's a belt you find interesting. And um, if you guys get a chance, uh, go check out Epe Analyzed on Instagram. Um, but otherwise, just take care, guys. And go learn from your mistakes. Not a big deal to lose a practice.